So, tell me a little bit about this project. So this is the Bassett Street Community Garden, and it's a rather wonderful example of a community reclaiming a piece of unloved land. So this was this is council land mm -hmm. attached to the housing estate here, but wasn't really used for anything. It was an empty bit of land, and residents around the area have been campaigning for many, many years for a garden space here. Mm -hmm. And, and Camden Council then gave permission for the space to be used in a, with a temporary lease as a community garden, which is what's happened here. So the community came together for a work day and we helped build all of these raised beds. We filled up the white builder's bags mm -hmm. over here and now have a system whereby people who live in the local area with a few streets radius either side can apply to have an individual plot so they get one square plot each mm -hmm. and there's also some communal areas here where you can see people gardening at the moment where we grow crops that everyone can uh, share. So was this all achieved in one day? No, over a series of, of weekends <laughs> yeah. and now we all have a key, mm -hmm. we let ourselves in and we've formed a, a group with the constitution about how we would use this space uh, and it, what I've found is it's really brought people together who would never really have or often would not have found reason to mm -hmm, chat mm -hmm. on the streets mm -hmm. so here we have conversations with people you may have crossed the road you may have seen many times but it's here that we actually have started to get to know each other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the really powerful things about gardening is it's a very unthreatening activity and it crosses all cultural boundaries and everyone what likes to eat, everyone likes to try things, swapping seeds, swapping ideas, swapping mm -hmm. techniques, and that's what comes out in a project like this. And that's, to me, mark far more important than the physical produce we've got. It's the effect it has just on conversation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. connections. So what, pe what are people actually growing here? Um, a massive range of bits and pieces. Uh, at the moment, there's a lot of um, Bangladeshi gardeners use the space. And typically there's mustards and corianders and beans and uh, there's a, an amaranth called doogie which they're very keen on which has red leaves used in the tips are used in curries um, and the stems are cooked a bit longer mm -hmm. and I've been learning a lot myself about plants that I wasn't familiar with just by having conversations here mm -hmm. and then we've got your more everyday more traditional crops of, at the moment broad beans and peas and lots of herbs and really now the time to clear the space in spring, ready for a real rush of growing over the mm -hmm. summer. So how many people are actually involved, do you think? I think we have on the books a bit over 100. Mm -hmm. And in terms of people who come every day, there's a smaller group. And then we have work days where we encourage people to come and basically get stuck into joint tasks around the garden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's early days, this space, and we're sort of learning our way as to how what works in terms of people making best use of their plots, how to bring people together, and plans include workshops. I've been giving some workshops here, and also events such as parties and barbecues, and basically celebrating the area as much as the garden, and mm -hmm. using this as a venue for that kind of event. So if people in other parts of London uh, looking at this and think, what a fantastic idea, uh, how would you recommend they get started? Well. I say there's lots of examples now in London of interesting uses of, of community spaces, building gardens where previously there was nothing. This is just one of hundreds I can I've come across. But um, <laughs> in terms of advice, I think my main tip would be get in touch with Capital Growth which is an organisation whose raison d'etre is to support projects like this. And they have a lot of expertise in terms of uh, helping with getting permissions and training. I'm one of their trainers. Mm -hmm. And they also have a huge network of kindred spirits. So you get plugged into a lot of people who are going down a similar path, encountering similar challenges, but also successes. And that's step number one. Mm -hmm. And I think step number two is if you find a space well, you've been eyeing up a space that has potential is to be bold in tracking down whoever whoever owns that space because in 
in general, if, if you're a landowner, there's the potential to feel slightly threatened that someone's going to take over your space. But if it's framed in such a way that you have a sort of temporary arrangement so that for a number of years your community group can be growing in that space, but legally they have the right with sufficient notice to take it back, even if a space is ripe for development in the long term, in the short term, you can build something you know, powerful in terms of a community mm. project um, and both sides of the equation are, are benefiting. And in this case, the Camden Council owned, owned this space. Yeah, and it's still were they very Council. happy? Were they very happy about... Yeah, yeah, they've been great. And it's, it is Camden Council space, so we mm -hmm. can't do things like muck about with the structure or the walls or make permanent alterations. And I think one of the, the missions here is to prove that it can work, because we need to prove to councils who, are, who have been bold enough to give permission that it's a very positive force for good in terms of community cohesion and, and enhancing their area so that these kind of projects mushroom even more. Fantastic.